Hey y'all, today on the farm we're going to be talking about different types of tillage. Y'all can see I still have the field cultivator hooked to the 4960, but we're not going to be doing any shallow tillage today. Today it's going to be deep tillage. I'm going to be on the 8530 with the 11 prong V Ripper KMC subsoiler. I'm going to hopefully finish up all the subsoiling for the year today and then we're going to switch back over to the bottom plow. I've got my tractor serviced up, so now I'm gonna come back here and look over my subsolar. What I'm looking at is the wear on the points here. Uh, initially, I'm gonna look and see if they're hanging down. So if, as they get worn, they won't be hanging down as far. Then I'm gonna look at the back of them. Sometimes the back will wear thin. This one's not worn thin, it's in good shape. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm checking my where I hard surface at, making sure the hard surface is still on there. We haven't worn that off. And then I'm looking at my shin guards. As my shin guards start to wear, they'll have a little more contour to them, a little shape. And see, this one is wider than the foot, and that's how you want it to be. That means it's taking the brunt force of all that, that soil instead of the foot. And so we're wearing this instead of wearing this. What you don't want is for this to wear out, and then you start making your foot narrow, and then you wear out your foot. Uh, if I wear these feet out, this whole shank, all the way across this machine, you're, you're talking about eleven to a thousand dollars on the low end to replace those shanks. So it's important I can look at these shin guards every morning and sometimes throughout the day to make sure they're not wearing out. Here's an example of one that I'll probably change today. You see this this bottom one is good and straight, and this top one's got a dip in it and it's starting to get thinner right there. So this one I may replace. This field out here is a sticky red clay. And when it rains on clay, clay packs down and gets tight, gets real hard. And then if we come out here and plant our crop on a tightly packed clay, the roots can't grow. They can't, they can't penetrate through it. So the goal out here today is to run this subsoil about 18 inches deep, creating deep furrows, deep rips in the ground so that the, the water won't stand on the surface. It will actually penetrate and get stored in the ground and also to put more aeration in the dirt so that the roots can grow better once we get our crop planted out here. You'll notice right here by the subsoil, you can see where water has stood on the surface. And that is because all the compaction for the rain throughout the year, it made the, the ground hard. So water has stood on the surface here, it's not penetrating. And you see this big bottom down here. I'm having to turn around at this large bottom because it has become densely packed and water is standing on it. And right now, is too soft or too too muddy still for me to go across it so the top 10 or 12 inches the tractor will bog in and it's slick muddy but up under it it's hard as a brick bat and that's making the water stand on it if i can get back out here before we plant the corn to do that bottom because i'm having to leave it out today because it's too sticky and wet if i can get back out here and run the subsoiler through that bottom then it won't hold water throughout the crop season and I'll be able to plant corn right through it and it'll actually do very well. If I don't subsoil that bottom before the crop season, every time it rains, water will stand out there for a week and it will drown anything that gets planted there and subsequently no crops will be made on that bottom. Subsoiling it helps the water get into the ground and helps it, the crops grow, helps aerate it so we get good root growth. This subsoil is a real simple machine we have a wavy culture up front. That's the first line of attack. It's breaking open the surface of the ground for this uh, shank. The shank is buried down in there about 20 inches currently, 18 to 20 inches. And so we're breaking open the ground so it won't roll out a, a clod, a large dirt clod with this. And then we're coming behind it with a deep, deep cut. Getting that aeration. And behind the shanks, we have a row of S tines so you see these shanks behind them is, is leaving it kind of kind of cloddy looking. Well, these S tines stir that up, get, get it broke up just a little bit more, and then a drag pipe leaves it smooth-ish, smooth-ish. It's not perfect. You will have to come back out here or right ahead of the planter and run a field cultivator, get looking like a bed sheet. But this is good enough for now. This is what this machine does. And we got the right moisture. It is running textbook right now.
when I'm pulling this subsolar, it is a maximum load on this tractor all day long. I'm pulling it just as deep as I can. I'm adjusting the dip constantly, trying to run as deep as possible. If I can run a little bit deeper, I'm bumping it down. If it's loose, it's just a little bit of traction, I bump it up. I'm trying to keep it as deep as possible all day to get the most benefit. And as a result of that, the tractor's under a load all day. It's doing the maximum amount of work it can do in a day. And so my fuel consumption in a full day of subsoiling is about 180 gallons of diesel a day while I'm pulling this big V-Ripper. There's been a little discussion lately in the comments between the differences of a tractor driver and an operator. I'm just to lighten up on my load a little bit so I can cross that light wash right there. I don't want to deep penetrate on that area where water's moving across because it'll make it deeper. But you see the uh, little bit of soil being drugged by that drag pipe back there building up. When I get to the end and I turn around, I don't want to stop, pick up my subsoil, turn around, put it down. Because where I pick it up at, there's going to be a big mound of dirt. And I'm going to have a bunch of big mounds of dirt all around the field. So the proper way to do it is to lift that on the fly. As I approach the end, I will begin lifting and the subsoil will slowly come out of the ground and it will gradually spread that mound of dirt out. Anybody can click on the little GPS button here and let the tractor drive back and forth all day. Be it be a tractor driver, so to speak. But to be an equipment operator, if you're going to be a true operator, you're sitting here making adjustments all day. You're paying attention to what's going on. And it's all about those little details. All those details add up to a big difference over the course of a day. Subsoiling, so now we're gonna drop this subsolar off and hook up to the plow. plow hooked up I'm gonna check some of the wear parts on it I'm looking to see how far this projects past this frame down here that's a still a lot of wear right there as this gets shorter we will replace it because you'll start wearing the foot you don't want to do that I'm also gonna look at these plastic pieces make sure they're not worn too thin I'm checking them by looking at the size of the bolt heads as they get worn thin that bolt head will shrink and then you know your plastic is gonna come off these pieces are also replaceable. I'm looking at those, the bolt heads on them. I'm looking at the slides back here. This is called a slide. I'm checking the thickness of this slide right here and here to make sure they are still good. When I am plowing with the tractor, I'm only going to burn about 100 gallons of fuel a day. So that's about 80 gallons less than what I burn when I'm subsoiling. 
the tractor isn't under as much of a load pulling this plow even though it is an eight bottom plow I could still I could pull it faster than this if I want to but it would throw the dirt too far and leave the field uneven so I'm rolled back right now I'm running 3.7 I will pull it as fast as five in some conditions depending on the the dirt where I'm at in that part of the field but with this red dirt about four miles an hour with, with the moisture that's currently in it is, is where I want to be much over that right now it's gonna throw it too far The main reasons for plowing is to reduce nematode pressure and to reduce weeds which means reducing the usage of herbicides and the main reason for subsoiling which is what we do there on the corn land is to help the water the rain get into the ground so we decrease runoff when we subsoil and we also uh, increase the, the ground's ability to absorb and hold more water when we decrease runoff and while we're doing that subsoil, while we're increasing the, the ground's capacity to hold water, we're also making it where the roots can grow easier. But this process also makes it where the roots can grow easier. We fluffed up the ground so we get better root growth. And when we get better root growth, we get better yield. so in this case corn stubble is going to be incorporated a foot below the surface so i'm taking if you were to just to traditionally disc or, or do a strip till or no-till situation all your residue stays on the top and you will build up a layer there at the top but with the plowing we're incorporating the full root zone so we'll have organic material throughout the entire root zone instead of just right there on thin layer on the top and as you know with your crops your roots aren't just a thin layer on your top the roots are going down so we're incorporating organic material all the way down through the root zone and that's going to help out a lot with our soil nutrition. Plows are divided into four categories but it's really two and two. All plows are either on land or in furrow. And that refers to whether or not that wheel is in this furrow or not. If the drive wheels are on land it's an on land plow. If you ride with your wheels down in the furrow, ride like this all day, that's the in furrow. So this is a on land plow because I ride up on land. Even though my dual wheels are overhanging the furrow, my drive wheels are up here on land. Plows are also divided up into switch plows or flip plows. This is a switch plow, which means right now it's faced like this, but when I come back the other direction, I'm gonna switch it to face like that. When I go to switch it, this whole plow right here is gonna pivot on this big pin and the front of the plow will turn along that big radius up there and be facing over there. The reason that has to switch is because right now, the leading edge of the plow, what covers up the furrow is on the front. If I didn't switch it when I come back, the leading edge would be way over on the wrong side and be leaving this ditch. Your leading edge has to be right by the furrow covering up that furrow left by the back edge on the last pass. has a set of plows mounted on top of it up in the air that are facing one direction and a set of plows down on under it that are facing a different direction and so when they go across the field one way they have it standing up and when they come across the field the other way they turn it over so the plows that are facing the opposite direction are now on the bottom and it's throwing all the dirt to the correct side Well, that's 
gonna do it for today. We got another big rain fist to fall off in here in about an hour. We gotta get everything battened down, hooked down, so don't nothing blow away. I thank all y'all for watching today. Hope you learned a little bit of something about plows versus subsolars. I hope to see all of y'all next time.